So I'm looking at this skull shaver again. If I apply power to it, the LED, which replaces the motor at the moment, um, is always on. So the component that I put in Q3 mustn't be the right one. Or the main IC is faulty. Now, I thought component Q3 was a P-channel MOSFET. And I thought that because of this picture. This is, that looks to me like 3401. And 3401 is a P-channel MOSFET. I've also came across this video, um, John Doe How To. He's got a faulty Q3. And in the comments section, Cedric, I said, I repaired this with a 3416. And a 3416 is an N-channel MOSFET. But back to his video, someone later down said that transistor is a FDN340P. And a 340P is a P-channel MOSFET. So you can understand the confusion. When I released my video, I had a conversation with Lal Mwan, I don't know how to say it, and he explained that it could be an N-channel MOSFET. So I ordered some BSS138, and he recommended a 2302. So that's what I've got on the bench. I've got a 2302 and a BSS 138. I'm going to swap this one that I put in earlier, that's not working, with one of these. And I'm hoping that'll be the end of it. If this doesn't work, it must be the chip. So that's what I'm doing in today's video. Right, let's get started. a little bit of solder off that resistor there so we'll pop that back on and we'll put a little drop of blob of solder on one pad and this is the new one there you go Right, I'm not going to bother cleaning that up until I know that it works. So I'll pop these wires back on. Right, so when we turn this power supply on, we're hoping the light stays off, but the LED comes on. Right, power supply on, switch on. Oh. Oh, it's looking good. If I press this button, that should switch the motor on, i.e. the LED should come on. And it does. Is it going to turn off? And it does. So it's not a PNP. So it's not a P channel MOSFET. It's an N channel MOSFET. And I think it's fixed. So I'll switch that off, I'll clean the board up there, and I'll put the connectors back on. I'm just going to have to put it back together at this point, and then give it a test. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'm getting excited.
Beautiful. Let's take this LED out. Clean them holes up. This is where the charging voltage comes in, so we'll have to clean that out. And the positive. Oh, hang on. I've got a... I've got a capacitor to go in here. I've taken a capacitor off, I've just remembered. So there's a capacitor to go in there. Take this off. And this one. And we need to bridge that when the battery goes in. I think they've left a gap so they can manufacture it and put everything together. And then at the last minute, they might just fill it up with solder because the system's always on. Right, where's that capacitor? It's got to go in there. I have to make sure it went on the bottom of the board. I'm pretty sure it did. Yep, that definitely goes on the bottom. I just put a new cup in instead of struggling with the with the leg. Where's the battery? I seem to be missing the battery. I started panicking there. Right, battery. Now putting this back together was a bit of a jigsaw puzzle because I'm sure I had to desold a certain wires to get it apart. Right, that's the picture I need. That shows us the battery orientation, the motor and the charging port at the bottom. So we've got the battery, we've got the motor, the charging port at the bottom and the battery goes on that way I think. I'll put that on last. So these must come through from the bottom through there. Can I hold that and get a dab of solder on there? No. Come on. Why won't that go through the hole? Wires are quite short, I don't really want to cut them. Unless I have to. That one's okay, 5 volt on and ground. Brilliant. I think I'm going to have to cut that one. I'm going to have to cut them too. They're off the motor. And that's why I swapped the motor out for the LED. Because I knew those wires would eventually snap. And the battery was in that orientation. Just 
just want to go in there. I just double check that. Yes, that's correct. Remember those tabs and over like that. And on the positive side, and we've got a bridge that gap there. And if I cannot bridge it, I'm just going to put a capacitor leg across there. Or I could use a little bit of this, couldn't I? Capacitor leg might be easier to work with. Perfect. Fantastic. Because if I hold this together and I press that button, I've got 96% capacity on the battery and the motor is spinning like it should. So now, just got to put it back together. I'll give the board a clean and then I'll work out which screws I need. Like a puzzle trying to get that back together. I put on this piece the wrong way around. So I've had to desolder the, the uh, AC input and put them back together. The big screws go in the bottom there and that keeps the top on with the button. I've got to put this back on. Bottom up there. It's really not very enjoyable to work on. Right, got it. So that must just go in there. And it does. Right, before I put these screws back in, now I've just tested that and it came on like a minute ago. Literally a minute ago that was working. I don't believe that. That was working before I put them screws in. Wait, what's happened? Press this button. It is working. There's the See how awkward it is. Is that not clipped into there properly? That circuit board's got to clip into the top. So that button hits that little white part. So all I can suspect. Wires aren't blooming long enough. That it? Still no. That it? That's it. Right, that goes back on there. We need screws in there. I'm missing a little one now. There it is. Got a fright. If I'd, if I'd came across the right information, 
of that being an N-channel MOSFET, I would have saved a load of time. So I'm hoping somebody with a similar problem will come across this little video and I hope and it saved them a lot of time by putting the wrong one in like I did. I wonder if there's two versions of this. I cannot imagine it. This stupid elastic band is on. Eventually. Right, please work. Yes. Put these little screws back in. Always do them diagonally. And I've got some things of these to go in. If I can get them back in. I think these are a specific shape to fit. Yes, they are. Look. I think the flat piece goes on the inside towards the screw. I'm quite happy. Oh, hang on. We'll make sure it's charging. It took a lot longer than what it should have done. But like I say, the first picture did imply it was a P-channel MOSFET. And then there was that P-channel MOSFET comment, comment on the YouTube video. Right. Yeah, look. It's charging. What a worthy fix. So a big thank you to Lal Mwan Pul, Pul Zemo, who put me onto the chance it could look like a N-channel MOSFET because the P-channel needs negative voltage so it is indeed an N-channel MOSFET excellent so I will get in touch with Dave he can have that back and I will move on to something else so thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next one